Adobe just released their long-awaited Lightroom update, and oh boy, they have finally added one major feature that photographers have been asking for for a long time. Now, you know a while back when Lightroom added the ability to create masks for people using AI? So in one click, what happened was you could find all the people in a photo, you could make masks selecting just their hair or their eyes or their teeth, and select the individual people in the photo, and this was a massive, massive update for portrait photographers and for people who are editing a lot of photos of people. And it was such a big deal that I changed my entire workflow. I put together an AI editing toolkit to let me add these AI masks in one click. And this was a big, big deal. But here's the thing. While Lightroom had some features like auto select sky or select background, they kind of left landscape and more nature photographers feeling a little bit left out. Until now. Because as it turns out, Adobe has been quietly building a pretty crazy new feature inside of Lightroom and Lightroom Classic that has the potential to change the way that landscape photographers edit their photos. So let's take a quick look at this together and I'm gonna show you how it works on a few different photos. Then we can talk about whether or not this tool is gonna be radically changing my workflow. Let's get into it. Okay, so whether you are using Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC, you're going to find this tool in the same place, all right? You can go over here where we have our adjustment brushes and we can select make a new adjustment and you're gonna see there's the the new option here to select landscape. When you click on that, Lightroom is going to analyze the photo, look at all the different elements it can identify, and basically give you the option to create these individual masks for the sky, the vegetation, the ground, the artificial ground, and we can go create mask. That simple. And now you're going to see that there's individual masks for each of those elements in the photo, which is pretty cool. So let's kind of play around with this, take a look at how good these masks are and what we can possibly do with them. So in this case, I've got my sky here. I'm going to add a little bit of a curve so that instead of it being pure white, I just want it to be maybe more of a muted gray. I'm going to grab my vegetation, which is all these trees. And let's say I want to kind of bring out the highlights, add a little bit of contrast and lower the exposure down. Okay, something like that. I can go before and after. Okay, and you can see here that the problem is that although Lightroom did a pretty decent job, the mask isn't perfect. And so one thing I'm finding with this is that you kind of have to limit the amount that you can pull these different layers back and forth. Like you have to do more modest edits, which tends to be something I struggle with. But I can take this slider here and obviously dial in exactly how much of that effect that I want to have on my vegetation, which is pretty cool. I think that looks great. All right, let's keep going with our artificial ground, which is the road here. And you can see that Lightroom did an okay job, but we grabbed some parts of this that I wouldn't call artificial. I'd call it just ground. <laughs> so let's uh, play around. We'll increase the contrast maybe a little bit, lower the exposure so that our subject drops or pops out just a bit. And then I'm going to actually go in here and lower the texture just a bit and the clarity to add a little bit of dreaminess, and maybe increase the dehaze just a bit. Okay, so we get a bit more pop. Okay, and then we've got our natural ground, which Lightroom decided is kind of the gravel on either side of the road. I'm happy with that. I can go in here and add some dehaze. Now, if I go too far and I push it too far, you're gonna see that the mask again isn't perfect. It's grabbed some parts of this that are actually just the normal road. So what I can do is select any of these masks. If I find something I don't want selected, click on it and go where it says subtract. From there, I can go with a brush or remove it a different way, but for now, we'll just select brush and I can brush on this part of the road that I don't want masked out. Okay, easy as that. You can do the same thing for our artificial ground. Let's say that Lightroom wasn't grabbing all of that artificial ground and we wanted to grab something else like this sign here. I can go to add and then go where it says select object and put my brush right on top of this little road sign. And hopefully Lightroom's gonna find it and add it to our mask. So if you are having trouble, Lightroom's not grabbing everything, that is an option for you. So let's just correct this. We'll get our natural ground into a sort of reasonable place. And then I can show you, here's without the masks and here's with. So we've made some pretty dramatic edits by doing that in just a couple of seconds. And what's nice is instead of editing the whole photo, just doing these massive global changes, we've been able to do it one piece at a time. So this time, let me show you a different way to find the landscape masks. We can actually just hit K on our keyboard if you're using Lightroom Classic or B on your keyboard if you're using Lightroom CC. So hit K or B and you're gonna see that the mask panel pulls up like that. We can go to where it says create new mask and then select select landscape. And Lightroom's gonna do the same thing. It's going to analyze the photo, look for different elements, and then show us what it came up with. So in this case, it didn't grab everything, right? Like there's a little sky up here, it didn't find that. And it's kind of just given us the option of water and mountains. Okay, I'll take it. Let's grab both of those. We're gonna go create mask, and we've got two individual layers. So from here, we can make the water really pop by raising up those highlights a little bit. 
maybe adding some contrast. If we want to go crazy, we'll add some texture, some clarity, right? Let, let's say we're going hardcore. <laughs> and then we can grab the mountains and maybe do the opposite, right? Because the water is the focal point of the photo. We want it to be the brightest, most sharp part of that image. So we can take our exposure down on the rest and we can grab our effects and maybe take our texture down a little bit, maybe our clarity down a little bit. In a couple of clicks, we've been able to isolate out the main element of that photo. And I've definitely overdone it. That's totally fine. I can go to the mountain section, grab the amount slider at the very top and dial in exactly how much of that effect actually looks good. Probably more like that will be fine. If in doubt, dial it back. <laughs> Let's keep going. So this one's kind of interesting. If I hit K on my keyboard or B, if you're using Lightroom CC, we're gonna pull up our mask panel Go up here and select landscape. And this time, because we have a building in the photo, Lightroom should give us some more options. So it detected that we do have the sky in the photo, the mountains, the architecture, the vegetation, and the natural ground. Okay, a few more options to play with. So let's create these masks and we'll start with our natural ground, sure. So we've selected the mountains and we've selected kind of the ground in front of our subject. So Typically, I would actually want to select these separately, like turn them into separate masks. I want the background mountains and the foreground ground to be different masks. That's easy. I can right click this natural ground mask, duplicate. And now we're going to have two versions of this. And now I can just subtract. And this one, I'll make my mountain mask. I'll select the other one, go subtract and subtract with a brush. And this one, I will make the foreground. Okay. Easy peasy. Let's uh, call this the foreground just so we don't forget which one is which. And now I can maybe just dial back the clarity and add a little bit of dehaze, let's say, in that foreground with our mountains. We can maybe take the texture down and the clarity down just to make it more dreamy as if there's more fog in the sky, right? Maybe not that far, but a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of dehaze and now it feels like we either had fog going across these mountains or maybe it's just snowing in the background. Grab our vegetation and we'll kind of do the same thing as our other photo where we add a little bit more contrast to this because it really is nice when we can pop it like that. Now we've got our architecture. If we make it darker, our subject is going to stand out more. If we make it brighter, if the architecture itself is the focal point of this photo, we can make it a little bit brighter, make it pop, raise the highlights, raise the whites, and uh, maybe we'll lower the contrast, but we'll raise the shadows and we'll drop the blacks. And we've gone way too far, right? No problem. You can take your main global mask at the top and just dial this into where it feels nice. So I'm gonna go with somewhere like that. And in a couple of clicks, we've gone from here to here. Right? And we've done it all without actually needing any presets. I haven't added any presets on top of this photo. This is just Adobe color. We could throw a preset on top of this, right? Like here's a nice matte one, or we could go with Adobe's adaptive color and maybe Lightroom can take it one step further. And if you want to know how adaptive color works, I just did a tutorial on that. You can check that out as well on the channel. So there's our photo. We started off here and we got to here. Pretty cool that we can play around and do this without the kind of finicky work of having to do this by hand, manually select all these different masks. Okay, let's look at a couple more and just show you the options of what you can do with this tool. So by now you kind of know the drill. I like to hit K on my keyboard, go up here, select landscape. And if this video is helpful while we're waiting, go ahead, hit the like button, leave a comment. I'm curious, have you played around with this already? I would love to hear it. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments because I read every comment and I will respond if you have a question. So let's create these different masks. Now, the one thing I'll say about this tool is I do wish that while we were at it, Lightroom had added the ability here to just mask out the people or mask out the objects. Like it can clearly see there's some objects that aren't sky, water or mountains. So it would have been nice to have an other function to grab everything else. Anyways, let's go ahead, go up to sky and let's start here. We can grab our exposure, bring it down a little bit. Okay, let's bring our highlights down and I'm going to go where it says effects. I'm going to take our clarity way down. And why am I doing this? Because we have a very high noise image. We've raised the exposure up by two stops already. And that's why we've got a lot of grain. And I just want to kind of take that out of the sky. And I'm going to grab those mountains and the water. And we're going to do kind of a cool little trick here. I'm going to add some color to the water because I want it to be a little bit more aquamarine. So you can grab different colors just like this and select whatever you want and add it to this particular layer of the photo. Now, one trick you might not know about is you can actually grab this you click somewhere on this little panel here and you drag it over onto the photo and then select the area that you actually want to sample. So that's what you have to do, okay? If you want to do this, I'm gonna click somewhere on this photo and then drag it over. I want maybe this green here, this nice deep green. And obviously I don't want it that saturated. So I can click and drag this down to just a nice subtle little place, maybe around there, okay? Now I can grab the mountains and do the same exact trick. Once over here, and drag it over here, maybe to this nice deep dark blue. And we're gonna grab our saturation on that color so we don't add quite so much. So here's before and here's after. 
And what I'm finding with this tool is incredibly helpful, can save a ton of time, but you're not going to want to use it for super fine detailed adjustments where you're trying to do something radical, right? The best advice I can give to anyone learning editing is start with subtle changes and stack them on top of each other. Don't try and do everything in one edit on one layer with one brush. What you want to do instead is slowly shape the photo so that as you have these successive masks on top of each other, you have a much more smooth transition. It's not super obvious that this section of the photo has been edited or that part has been tweaked. You want it to actually feel like the photo actually looked like that and not like someone was editing it and just cooking in the kitchen, okay? So last of all, I'm going to go up where it says create new mask. I'm going to select objects. And let's select this boat here because it's kind of the focal point of our photo, right? We really want to lead the eyes toward this part of the photo. And so what we can do, because we have these blue tones in the image, the opposite of blue on the color wheel is kind of the orange and yellow area, which is why there's so many teal and orange movies when you go see a summer blockbuster because those colors really play together. Skin tones and blues really contrast each other. I'm going to raise the saturation a little bit. Notice how I'm doing this in several different areas a little at a time rather than trying to do it all in the temperature or all in the saturation, which would make this feel really weird. And then I'm going to make it a little bit brighter and a little bit wider because your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part in a photo, in an image, in the room. It's just how our eyes work, right? We look for light, we look for color. So by giving it that, the focal point of the image becomes a lot more obvious. Here is before and here's after. Okay. Let's look at just a couple more. This one was taken um, on the way home from a trip to Yosemite. Let's select our landscape and Lightroom's going to think for a second and what's it going to give us this time? Okay, we've got our sky, our mountains, our vegetation, artificial and natural. We'll select everything. So what do we have? Well, our natural ground did an okay job, but it also selected the road in the foreground of this image. I don't want that. So we're going to go into our subtract and we're going to hit subtract with brush. And I'm just going to brush it out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And if you want to show this overlay or hide it, you just hit the O key on your keyboard. It will show and hide that overlay. O for overlay. Okay. So I'm going to show it again, just so I can see where I'm brushing. Okay, something like that. Much better. Okay, now we can take this natural ground and we can darken it down so the subject of our image becomes more obvious because the natural ground surrounding it is kind of framing it in. Your eyes are drawn to the brighter part of the photo, right? Don't overdo it. We can always blend it back in. Okay, now let's go to our artificial ground. You can see it's done the same thing. We grabbed most of the road, but not all of it. No problem. Go to add and select with a brush. And I'm just going to brush in the rest of this road. All right. Okay, and I got a little bit of that truck into my, my brushed zone. I don't want that, so I'm just going to erase it. And what a lot of people don't necessarily know is that if you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, you will switch between the brush and the eraser. So that's kind of handy. Okay, so now we can grab our artificial ground, and I don't know what I want to do here. Maybe brighten it up so that our truck, again, is standing out. So what we've done here, this is taking it too far, <laughs> but what we've done is we've made the background darker, so it's drawing us towards this brighter part, and then we've made the road brighter, and so what winds up happening is that the contrast between the truck and the road becomes more obvious, so your eye is more drawn to that truck. What is that thing in the middle of that big bright area? And I can grab my contrast, bring it down, grab my effects, maybe take the dehaze, take that down because there's lots of dust on the road, maybe I want more dust. Got our vegetation, whatever that is, sure, let's just add some dehaze, see what happens. Let's go to our mountains, bring our clarity and our texture down, make it nice and dreamy. Because again, that's not necessarily the focal point of the photo, so I don't want it to be like the one thing that catches your eye and competing for your attention, right? And last of all, we've got this kind of nice dust plume in behind this truck. I want to emphasize it. An easy way to do that, pull up a brush, grab your dehaze, bring it all the way down, like to minus 100. Clarity, texture, those can go down. We can add maybe a little bit of highlights and bring our contrast down and our whites up. Okay, what we've done is we've basically made a fog brush. We can brush in where the dust naturally was, and we can kind of even expand it a little bit. I'm going to pretend like there was more dust, maybe even pretend like there was some that was left over from that truck as it was driving past me super fast. And then we can just sort of play with this, blend it in. You do it little by little, and you can press O if you want to see your overlay. Now let's pretend that I'm happy with that. <laughs> we can grab this slider and just adjust the amount we want to add back in. And here's before, here's after. It's like a little bit of a subtle thing, but I kind of like it. I'm going to stick with it. So we've got before and after. Okay. So Adobe has really created a pretty incredible tool here that I'm sure landscape photographers are literally drooling over. It's going to be very handy to be able to use this tool to select these individual layers and just play, just figure out what you like, how it works. My advice would be start subtle. Don't try and apply these super huge, crazy edits because the masking at this point is not perfect. 
However, I think that Adobe is working really hard on this tool and it's going to refine the masking and it is going to get better with every single update. So I'm excited to see where this goes and I'm definitely going to be adding some landscape presets to my AI engine toolkit. If that's interesting to you, you can check the link in the description. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome and 